Hey guys, I'm going to be showing you how to do one of the door reversals on a Frigidaire top mount refrigerator straight from Anderson. The first thing we always want to do before doing any work to an appliance, let's unplug it so we can be safe. All right, so to start the process, we're going to go right here to our top right hinge. We're going to remove our hinge cover and these three screws that are located underneath our hinge cover. You can actually use an 8 millimeter socket or a 5 16 nut driver. All right, so up here on the top left, there's actually a piece of tape, a perfectly square black piece of tape. We're gonna peel this tape off, and then we're gonna move it, and we're gonna place it back down on top of our three holes where we just removed our hinge screws here on the right-hand side. Once we get that re-secured, we're gonna take our hinge cover with our three screws and our hinge bracket, and we're going to move those over to the left hand top of the cabinet. We're going to just hang on to those for now. We're not going to use them at this moment. I'm going to go ahead and open my freezer door. I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to go and set this down in a safe location. And we're going to proceed to the center hinge. All right. So Next, we're going to actually remove the center hinge pin. You're just going to drop a driver down right on top of it. You can use, an, again, an 8 millimeter or a 5 16 nut driver or socket. And I like to use a pair of pliers because it's got grease. They grease it to ensure that it's got no resistance just to hold on to it. I don't want it all over my fingers and I don't want to wipe it off of the pen, basically. So now that I've got the hinge pen removed, we're going to open the fresh food door and we're going to lift it up and off and we're going to set it in a safe location. All right, so we've made it down here to the bottom hinge. Um, the bottom hinge actually has the door closer screwed in right here on the, the bottom bracket the lower bracket, so I'm going to unscrew it. It's just a Phillips head screw. I'm going to lift the door closer up and off. Now, as you can see, that's the direction that it faces whenever the door is hinged on the left. We're going to rotate it completely over. That is the direction that it sits whenever it's hinged on the right. So we're going to go ahead and preemptively set it up put my screw back in and I'm going to set it over here because that's where it's going to go. Then we're going to go down to our bottom hinge pin. Again, this one is either a eight millimeter or a five sixteenths. I'm just going to try to hold on to the very top of it because it does have some grease on it. I don't want it to get all over my gloves and I don't want to wipe it off. I'm trying to protect it the best that I can. And the last thing is my hinge cover. We're just going to slide that forward. Forward and off. And now we can move over to the left hand side. All right, so we're going to start over here on the left hand hinge bracket by removing the cover. We're going to replace it with the cover that has the cutout on it that we took from the right hand side because now that we're hinging it on the left hand side we need the cover that's got the cutout. We're going to take our lower hinge pin and we're going to screw it to the outer outermost hole, the one closest to the outside wall of the unit. We got that snug. But then we're going to take our door closer. We're going to slide it down and we're going to tighten up that screw. Now I do want to caution you, make certain whenever you tighten this screw on this door closer, you want to get that sucker as tight as you can. If you do not get that thing tight and there's a little bit of slipping that occurs, 
you'll get a popping sound or the consumer will get a popping sound every time they open and close that door. We're trying to prevent that right now. So we're going to get this screw as tight as we can down here on the bottom. So let's move back over to our right hand hinge just to put that cover back on. And again, just like whenever we did the install, it just slides directly on the front and locks into place. Now we can start working on our doors. All right, so on the bottom of our fresh food door, we have our closer, um, our hook closer, our tension closer, and we have a bushing here. I'm gonna start by taking the closer off. It's got one number two square head screw. I'm gonna pull that out. Set our closer to the side, then we're going to take a good, thin, stiff, flat blade and we're going to pry our bushing out. And both of these are going to transfer, whoop, transfer to the other side of the door. And again, I'm trying not to, not to wipe off any of the grease. They do have some grease around this bushing to to help prevent any type of friction. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna slide my bushing back in. And then I'm gonna take my closer. Oop, closer's gotta be reversed. So we gotta take the screw out of it. Run our screw and just like that, the um, closer that we tightened up the best that we could down there on the lower hinge. This tensioner, we're going to tighten this screw up as tight as we can get it. I do not want any slipping whatsoever. I want that thing to be well secured. That way we don't have to worry about any noise or any problems, complaints from our consumer. So I'm going to go ahead and move to the top of the door. <clears throat> Now the top of the door just has a cap here. Slide our flat blade in there and pry it out. And then we're going to do the same with our bushing over here on the other side. I'm just going to slide our flat blade in and pry that out. So we can put our cap back in this hole. Move our bushing back to this hole. So let's go ahead and reverse the freezer door. I'm going to start by taking the tensioner hook off. It's one number two square head screw. And then we have our bushing, and then we're going to grab our flat blade and we're going to pop our bushing out. We're just going to slide our flat blade into the top and just pry outwards. And then let's flip our door. And we're going to reinstall them on the opposite side. Slide our bushing in, the flat edge goes to the outside. We're going to flip our hook around or our our tensioner. We're going to put our screw back in. And just like we did on the fresh food door, I'm going to try to get this as tight as I can. I want to ensure that it does not slip. There's nothing worse than going through the entire process of reversing the doors and then you go to test them, you're opening and closing them, and you're getting a funny noise out of them, which you know the consumer ain't going to like it, so you're going to have to take it back apart and figure out where that sound's coming from. Most of the time I find it comes from one of these screws was not tightened up enough. So I'm letting you know what I would do is I would take time to make certain those screws are good and secure before you go through the whole process. 
Now I'm going to move to the top of the door. Actually, the top of the door I'm okay. It, it has an opening for both sides. So the top of the door you don't need to worry about replacing or swapping your, your bushing for a cap. It doesn't have a cap on the top. So let's go ahead and set this door in a safe spot and I'll go ahead and work on moving my center hinge over. So to swap the center hinge, we've already got three screws over here on the left hand side that are going to have to come out. I'm going to transfer them to the right hand side just like I'm going to transfer that hinge and its three screws over here to the left hand side. But let's go ahead and let's take out these three screws. Again, it's a number two square head. All right, I'm going to transfer all these over here. On this side, we also have three number two square head screws. Take note, there is a, uh, there's a spacer that goes behind this hinge. Do not lose it. And we're going to transfer this hinge, the spacer, and the three screws over to our left-hand side. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and secure my center hinge back on. I'm not going to snug that one up all the way. Notice I do have my my spacer still behind my hinge. These snug. I'm not going to try to break the unit in half, but I'm going to get these screws as snug as I can. That's good. Let's put our screws back in on the right hand side. Again, I'm just getting these screws snug. I'm not trying to tighten them until they break off. Good deal. So we can get our doors back on now. All right, so we're going to start with our fresh food door. I'm going to lift it up and put it back on my lower hinge pin down here in the bottom. Then I'm going to lift it up so that I can align my top bushing with my center hinge pin. I'm going to drop my center hinge pin right back in there. Then we're going to grab our driver and we're going to tighten this thing back up. All right, so let's go ahead and put our freezer door back on. We're going to do the same process. I'm going to put the bottom bushing and my door back on the center hinge and then we're going to snap it closed. I'm going to take our upper hinge, work it back and forth and put our screws back in. Now one thing I want to stress the, the bottom, the fresh food door, you don't have a lot of play with it. It's pretty much in its final position based on where the hinges are. This upper one, you are going to have a little bit of play. So try to make certain that your seam between the fresh food door and the freezer door is even all the way across before you snug down your, your screws here in the top of the unit. So I'm not going to tighten up these three screws just yet. I'm going to come down and look at my seam and see how good it looks in between the two. I want a nice even reveal. Now I'm going to snug up my screws. I'm actually using my left hand to hold my hinge in place until I get them snug. And then we're going to put our cover back on. 
Double check that seam in between the two looks good. I also, let's do a quick look over from the outside perimeter and just verify that your gasket is making good contact. That way, whenever you leave, we don't have an air leak on the unit. We don't want to give them any reason to have to call us back. But that looks good. Guys, we have just completed a door reversal on one of our top mount refrigerators. If you guys have any other questions or concerns, feel free to check us out at electroluxservicetips.com.